Hello, Don in London. It's June 3rd, and this is the Daily Reflection from the AA Literature Book, Daily Reflections, this one, which is all about the 12 steps of AA and the 12 traditions. And for June 3rd, this is what it says. On a wing and a prayer. When we look at step 6, we have emphasised willingness as being indispensable. And that comes from AA's big book, page 76. Step 4 and 5 were difficult, but worthwhile. Now I was stuck on step 6, and in despair I picked up the big book and read this passage. I was outside, praying for willingness, when I raised my eyes and saw a huge bird rising in the sky. I watched it suddenly give itself up to the powerful air currents of the mountains. Swept along, swooping and soaring, the bird did things seemingly impossible for mortal birds to do. It was an inspiring example of a fellow creature letting go to a power greater than itself. I realised if the bird took back his will and tried to fly with less trust on its power alone, it would spoil its apparent free flight. That insight granted me the willingness to pray the seventh step prayer. It's not easy to follow God's will, and for me God is love, God is truth, God works through people in each circumstance. I must search out and be ready for the, for the currents and that's where prayer and meditation help every day on a daily basis because I am of myself nothing. I ask God, love, truth and wisdom of others to grant me the knowledge of his will and the power and courage to carry it out today. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. Twelve steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the twelve traditions in fellowship, unity, service and recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is 
as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are so we try not to tell each other what to do but there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tra traditions help us to find a sober life and uh, June for me is all about step 6 so I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me and step 6 it says here we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character so what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets it probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues the opposite and if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect envy is the desire for others traits status abilities or situation gluttony the third one is an inordinate desire to consume more than one than more than that which one requires lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury it is also known as wrath wrath or wrath sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work and the opposite if you like the seven contrary virtues humility kindness abstinence chastity patience liberality diligence and the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the the poem an epic poem written by Prudentius circa 410 AD an epic poem written practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth so very black and white you're either one or the other but in real life what are we? we're all of those things at different times in our lives and although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old fashioned we all have some sort of traits around those issues and the twelfth steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it in step six and step seven so step six is all about my defects of character and step seven is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so step six in the fellowship program reads as this with a bit of commentary from me and don't forget this is just a personal understanding it's your understanding in the end which counts and where do you get your personal understanding from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough so we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character this is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls so de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends 
He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again don't get hung up on creator it's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this the common good often is used or utilised of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member to him this proposition will be no theory at all it will be just about the largest fact in his life he will usually offer his proof in a statement like this sure I was beaten absolutely licked my own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene the best efforts of family friends doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism I simply couldn't stop drinking and no human being could seem to do the job for me but when I became willing to clean house that's step four and then as to a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished he was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession so in a very complete and literal way all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has proceeded to do exactly that and I would add to that as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish personality traits don't go away completely they just don't but if we ask on a daily basis at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects when men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives they commit a most unnatural act defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation they seem bent upon self-destruction they work against their, best, their own deepest instinct as they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession and uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning and as it says humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience liber liberality and diligence so working on sober rather than working on the next drink here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them a new life for nature and God alike abhor suicide but most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all every normal person wants for example to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society in the society of his fellows and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things indeed God made him that way he did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive it is nowhere evidence evident at least in this life that our creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives indeed that would be foolish to think that 
So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. And that's to do with our thinking and, and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions. But in no case does he render as, com as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character. And if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we have to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be an addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society this does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was a few of them may be but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement and that's the game progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail we, we would be back on pride and self will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet and we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway. But when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your you and your understanding of life. However it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even whilst 
staying within conventional bounds. Many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly, because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. And uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else, why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call, it, only we call that retiring. Consider, too, our talent for pr procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according, of course, to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. 
the remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals so perfect ideals so strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it we make a beginning and keep trying so contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence we are on a better wicket if you like, if you're a cricketer if we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open mindedness we shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction it will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be are we ready so contingent on the day we ask are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive excessive outlook or personality trait are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left it is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection we know that some delay however might be pardoned that word in the mind of a rationalizing alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning he could say how very easy sure I'll head towards perfection but I'm certainly not going to hurry maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely of course this won't do such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalization at the very least we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible or complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others the moment we say no never our minds close against the grace of God or common sense after all what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man we're not talking rocket science here we're talking common sense delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal this is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us as nature intended nature and providence all these wonderful words I like because you know spiritual is now spiritual is in the moment it's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now and either we accept life on life's terms acceptance is the key always or we get into trouble again and it's being defiant or angry against our situation often that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve so just a reminder the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose 
then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues which is all about step seven I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behaviour or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out my defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step 6 and 7 so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel ok given my current situation my feelings fit my, my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can, I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or my virtues are without foundation courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to, to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now why? because I'm giving it, I'm giving it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on. gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway, serenity prayer yes, I even sleep through all of that during the night, often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God, 
Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today. Don in London, hello. It's uh, June 3rd, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction. Uh, addiction to either substance or behaviour, or both. So my addictive substance was alcohol and my behaviour, workaholic, relationshipaholic. Always trying to be the best I could and striving for perfection. And uh, I guess that's part of the message, really. If we strive for perfection, there ain't no such thing. So generally, we're going to make uh, progress and often life gives us problems and often we can find solutions and the most often when I find my solutions is in the company of others so if I'm included part of and relating to people in a sort of equal fashion even though some people will either judge me harshly or judge me as I don't know it doesn't matter whatever their prejudice might be it's not my issue what I need to do is approach the world with an open honest willing outlook and be equal and try not to judge others just see how I am behaving myself in any given situation and sometimes it can be very difficult because uh, when we're asked difficult questions like what do you think of that and how did what do you think of that or that person do you have an opinion how they treated me and the answer is well I can only reflect and say well tell me how it felt you know how does it feel to be treated in a certain way so we alcoholics very sensitive people and often, even when we give feedback, we can be super sensitive and feel it as the worst criticism, and so we want to go back to denial, and uh, I'm no different in that. So when people criticise me, ah, where's it coming from, I ask myself, and am I doing them any harm? And uh, if they judge me, none of my business. Um, but I do, take care, I do take care and take note of what people say about recovery and uh, look for wisdom in everything <coughs> and um, yeah a few years in now so it's June and that's the sixth month of the year in the uh, pro program of AA we have 12 steps and in one of the books I use here on YouTube to illustrate um, some of the literature which can be helpful the daily reflections this one covers each step in a monthly order if you like so the day uh, a page a day to uh, have some meditation and reflection and for June 3rd it says here on a wing and a prayer I'm going to keep an eye on the time because these readings are quite long today when we look at step 6 we have emphasised willingness as being indis indispensable and the step 6 says we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character but you know what all the steps bar one we can only make progress so uh, when we talk about defects, it's probably a deficit or overusing certain parts of our personality in terms of attitude and behaviour. So when I said, you know, in the old days I used to be full of fear, putting on a brave face and ego, those could be said to be defects of character, or I'm, I'm utilising them too much, when in fact a bit more confidence, courage and faith might help. And it's faith in the situation, faith in me and faith in, in an outlook that I can find the truth of now. So rather than cover up my fear, put on a brave face and be brittle in my ego, I try to look for courage, faith and confidence in each day. So it says here, step four and five were difficult but worthwhile. And that four is the fear, fearless moral inventory and step five is sharing it with another human being. Now I was stuck on step, step six and in despair I picked up the big book and read this passage. I was outside praying, praying for willingness when I raised my eyes and saw a huge bird rising in the sky. I watched it suddenly give itself up to the powerful air currents of the mountains. Swept along, swooping and soaring, the bird did, did things seemingly impossible for mortal birds to do. It was an inspiring example of a fellow creature letting go to a power greater than itself. I realised that if the bird took back its will and tried to fly with, tra with less trust on its power alone, it would spoil its apparent free flight. That insight granted me the willingness to pray for the seventh, pray the seventh step prayer, and I haven't done that yet, but we'll get on to it next month. It's not easy to know God's will in each circumstance. I must search out and be ready for the currents 
and that's where prayer and meditation help. Because I am of myself nothing, I ask God or good conscience to grant me the knowledge of his will and the power and courage to carry it out just for today. And, uh, you know, it's being one with people, with nature, and knowing that if we go with the flow of life, with the, the flow of where people are, and if they're into the solution of life, go with them. And if they're in the problem of life, don't go with them. Otherwise we get back to our fear, brave facing and ego very quickly. And in this book, the 12 by 12, which is 12 steps and 12 traditions, the short version of step 6 says this. We, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Uh, it's willingness here and progress. It's not perfection and it's about being involved and included. That's how I see it. Step 6, necessary to spiritual growth, which is seeing reality. The beginning of a lifetime job, a day at a time. Recognition of the difference between striving for objective and perfection, and that is uh, making it work, or being in the solution, not perfection. We must keep trying. Being, is ready. being ready is all important. Necessity of taking action. Delay is dangerous, rebellion may be fatal. Point at which we abandon limited objectives, which is my thinking and willpower and move towards God's will for us, or the higher uh, inclusion in what's going on around us, and good conscience, because we need to learn what is our good conscience, so it's not easy. And, you know, this is why they say it's a lifetime job, but uh, fortunately lifetimes are a day at a time, so we merely make progress. And these things work because they're about inclusion, love, and being a part of. So on this book, as Bill sees it, you can read as many pages as you like on a daily basis, but I, d I recommend doing one, because uh, you know, the more we try and change at one time, the more difficult it gets and very frustrating. And if we overdo it and overcommit, we suddenly find ourselves with so much to do, we can't do anything right. Just like me. And uh, page 120, as Bill sees it, word of mouth. And this is where I may come unstuck with some people. My view, there isn't the slightest objection to groups who wish to remain strictly anonymous or to people who think they would not like their membership in AA known at all. That is their business, and this is a very natural re reaction. However, most people find that anonymity to this degree is not, ne not necessary or even desirable. Once one is fairly sober and sure of this, there seems to be no reason for failing to talk about AA membership in the right places. This ten has a tendency to bring in other people. Word of mouth is one of our most important communications. So in the context of the time when it was written, back through the decades, people were very concerned about the attitude of the uh, external word, world towards alcoholics, generally, the stigma about it, no understanding of that it, it is a disease, no understanding that willpower doesn't work to uh, conquer addiction, all those things. So most alcoholics, low bottom cases or rock bottom cases, like we, we all get to a rock bottom. We have the problem of uh, the world doesn't understand it, and why should it? Because they haven't got it. But if you haven't got it, how do you understand it? So there is lots of stigma around this. And so it goes on to say, so we would criticize neither people who wish to remain silent nor even the people who wish to talk too much about belonging to AA, provided they do not do so at the public level and thus compromise the whole society. And the, you know that's so important and that's why I say, without a doubt, I do not speak for AA. AA is full of unique authentic people and it has some traditions which hold it together. Uh, they were written in a time when it was most important that people felt comfortable and I still feel that is right. For me, AA and anonymity provide sanctuary. Sanctuary to find our spiritual truth, our emotional truth, and physically our truth as well. So we may then progress gently onwards. And the spiritual foundation for life is actually being in reality with less filters and denials. So filters are old behaviors, denials are, I can't believe where I am today, I need a drink. And the answer is, I don't need a drink. So, the serenity prayer, which is all about acceptance of the reality of now, either an exhortation to God or your good conscience, or whatever your higher power is, is, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, because I don't need to change anybody else's view or outlook. Courage to change the things I can, and that is to change my view, outlook, attitude and behavior. 
and learn the wisdom to know the difference and if I do that on a daily basis I've got a bit of a good shot at making one day work and going to sleep tonight without a drink. More later.